Hi guys, it's Dr. T here, also known as Dr. Pelvic Floor. Welcome back to another video. The goal of my channel is to discover, listen to, and promote stories from overlooked voices, including my own, and not to mention a little education as well. All right, guys, let's go. Hi everyone, Dr. Pelvic Floor here. So this is what we've been waiting for. We've actually been waiting to review the pelvic floor model and I have it right here. So what I plan to do is actually take you step by step through these anatomical structures and actually through this actual pelvis. And I think we should just get started and get right into it. So here you can see the pelvic model with all the pelvic organs within it. This is specifically a female pelvic model. If you want me to do a male pelvic model in the future, I certainly can. As a urogynecologist, we operate on and take care of women exclusively. However, we need to know anatomy. So if you take a look at the pelvis here, the very first thing I'm going to remove is the rectum. The next thing I'm going to remove is the uterus and the vagina and also the tubes and the ovaries because they're attached. And then finally, I'm going to remove the bladder. So then what is that? There's more inside there. It looks like it's the pelvic floor. That pelvic floor is important, I can tell you. It's important in the dysfunction of pelvic floor disorders and it's very important. And I think that this is something that is often overlooked and or not well explained and or did you even know it was there? The pelvic floor is beautifully designed. So I'm actually going to start off by talking about the bony structures and also the connective tissue structures. I'm going to be talking about the major connective tissue structures and the major bony structures. The white parts are the bony structures. The light blue areas are the ligaments. The red areas are the muscles. Of course, there's going to be some other red areas that are not muscle. However, this is just a general orientation. You might be surprised to know that the pelvis actually doesn't sit up and down, even when we're standing up straight. It's actually a little tilted in us humans. If you can imagine, if you could put your hands on your hips right now, or where we call hips, you can put your hands right on your hips you can feel a strong bone that strong bone that you're feeling is actually right here and this ridge here is called the iliac crest now there's fossa which means almost an indentation or a caving in as you can see my hand glides and then enters this fossa kind of this cave-like area right here there's an anterior portion, which we call the anterior superior iliac spine. It is anterior, it is in front, it is superior, it is up, and it is part of that iliac crest, the endmost part. It's called the anterior superior iliac spine. When you lie down and you feel on the lower aspect of your pelvis, a bony structure, you might be actually feeling the anterior superior iliac spine. Is there a posterior? Absolutely. If you follow the iliac crest and come down to this location right here, you've got the posterior superior iliac spine. Now, it might be a little bit harder to feel, but for those in the know, if you go down and feel at the upper aspect of your buttocks, you'll be able to sometimes feel the posterior superior iliac spine. This is the pelvic girdle. Now, you might be saying to yourself, what about this? This is actually the vertebra and also the discs here, and they insert into the sacrum. The sacrum certainly is part of the pelvic girdle. The portion of the spine and the spinal column that enters into the sacrum is called the lumbar portion of the spine. It's the lumbar portion of the spine. So it's that lowermost part portion of the spine entering then into the sacral region. And you can see the sacral region is like an upside down triangle. And also it has a bony tip at the end called the coccyx bone. You can see here that all of these red structures are muscle. 
all of these red structures are muscle. Muscle is intimately associated with the sacrum, the coccyx, and also surrounds and makes up the pelvic floor. Let's talk about ligaments. So you actually might be wondering, are there ligaments associated with the pelvic girdle? And there are. If you're asking about ligaments, you might already know that ligaments are these tough, strong, elastic tissue that attach bone to bone. Do we have any ligaments in the pelvic floor here? Let's take a look. And yes, here they are. There's two large ligaments that I want to talk about today. The first one is actually called the sacrotuberous ligament. So why is it called sacrotuberous ligament? Typically, when talking about anatomical structures, there is an origin and an insertion. We know that this is the sacrum. And we can see here that there's a sacral portion of this ligament. This bony protuberance right here at the bottom of our pelvic girdle is called the ischial tuberosity. So what are we going to name this? We're going to call this the sacrotuberous ligament. Let's take off this ligament because I'm very lucky. This model actually allows me to take off these structures. I want to show you what's underneath. This is very cool. Once I remove that ligament, there's another ligament here. I see that there's a bony protuberance called the ischial spine. You can't quite see it from the front, but the ischial spine is right there and the ischial spine is right there. It's actually a very important landmark in obstetrics and gynecology and in urogynecology. So if this is called the ischial spine, and also this is a portion of the sacrum, then this is called the sacrospinous ligament. Sacrospinous ligament. So now you can see the sacrospinous ligament has been identified. We can see here the sacrotuberous ligament has been identified but you might say, well, here is a stretch of blue that goes up here. These are simply the posterior sacroiliac ligaments. But the main ones I wanted to show you were these. We already know that that's the coccyx bone. This is the pubic bone with the pubic symphysis in between. If you feel at the lowermost part of your abdomen, your lower pelvis, and you feel a bone there, that bone there, most likely that you are feeling, is indeed the pubic bone. This is the left lateral view. This is the right lateral view, and you can see the ligaments. That is the sacrotuberous ligament. That is the pubic bone and symphysis. That is the sacrum and coccyx. It's triangular. So that's it guys. I've given an introduction into the pelvic girdle. Now in future videos, we will talk about each and every single one of these pelvic structures, but I just wanted to give you an overview as to what's in there. Let's start by actually naming some of these things. And I know I've not named everything. However, at least we have an introduction into these pelvic floor structures. I want to thank you for being awesome subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. It looks like my channel is growing every single week and I'll see you in the next video. Again, this is Dr. Pelvic Floor. See you guys.